Too much, too much people dying. Too much, too much. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how the thing going on. My name is episode. Another strength today is Parker from the Freestyle Bar. Brandy single out there. Welcome. Breakfast. Daily. Beautiful country. There is so much of it you probably haven't seen, haven't experienced, haven't touched, haven't felt, haven't eaten. When this is all over, let's discover our land again with new eyes. Let's feel each other again. We are one people, brought together by destiny. Let's make that count. Let's show love for each other and our environment. Let's tell our stories. And let's watch and listen to our stories. There will be so much to tell. Ghana is a truly beautiful country. Be Ghana. Stay in Ghana. Experience Ghana. Make Ghana great. And we will invite the world to come and experience Ghana too. But for now, stay home. Brought to you by the National Film Authority. Supports the Stay Home and Discover Ghana Later campaign. This channel supports the campaign. God bless our homeland, Ghana. <laughs> City TV. Yes, a beautiful, beautiful Monday morning. Today is the 15th of June. Mm -hmm. You're welcome once again, wherever you're watching us from, with our social media, on live TV, in Ghana, or anywhere else in the world. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. My name is David Kwekusechi. And I am Jifa Ekwia Ahmed. I'm not the 15th. You know what that means. We're literally at the midpoint of the year. Yeah. You know, I can't remember. It was just, it, actually, I won't say it was just yesterday because this has been a very long year <laughs> where everyone was talking about new decades. This yeah. is my plan. This yeah. is what I will do. And then Corona happened, yeah. you know, and people have lost loved ones, people have lost their jobs. Mm. You know, it's not been easy, but we're still alive and we're still making it yeah. through, so we'll be fine. We'll be yeah. just fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, the president came to speak to us, um, you know, regarding the new protocols, the new numbers, and so on and so forth. The decisions he was taking as a leader of our country. Um, to, to, to make things better for all of us. Now, of course, we also know that there's a reopening of schools and all of that. Yeah, Let's tertiary students yeah. are starting yeah. school today. Yeah, mm. and some people have already written their exams online, but yeah. there's a number of them that need to actually go in place to actually write their exams. And so they're going back to school and to prepare for their exams and all that. So um, let's take a look at what the president said yesterday. We'll come back and continue the conversation. Exactly two weeks ago, I came again into your homes to outline a roadmap for easing the restrictions put in place to help contain the spread of the coronavirus pandemic in our country. I indicated that it would be a phased approach involving a selected list of public gatherings based on their risk profile, socioeconomic impact, and most importantly, our capacity to enforce and to respond in the event of a flare-up in our number of infections. Since then, we have had some of our religious institutions opening their doors to worshippers while respecting the limits of numbers and maintaining the strict protocols announced. 
Others have decided to remain closed until further notice. Private burials are taking place. Marketplaces, public transport, including domestic air transport, restaurants, hotels, individual and non-contact sports, and our constitutional and statutory bodies are conducting their activities in accordance with social distancing and the relevant hygiene protocols. From tomorrow, Monday 15th June, the last batch of institutions in this phased approach, our educational institutions, will begin to reopen with final year students in our tertiary colleges and universities returning to school to prepare for and take their exit examinations. As has been stated, final year senior high school SHS3 students, together with SHS2 Go Track students, will resume on 22nd June and final year junior high school, JHS3 students, the week after, on 29th June. The decision to include our schools in phase one of the easing of restrictions was taken advisedly. Some argue that we're putting the lives of our students, teachers, and non-teaching staff in danger by this reopening citing the examples of other countries who have done so and recorded spikes in their infection case counts. I've stated on several occasions that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to the resolution of this pandemic. We have our own unique situation in the country, and we have always taken that into account in dealing with this disease much as we are prepared to learn from the examples of others. Fellow Ghanaians, over the last three months, every aspect of our national life has been affected by this virus. We've had to take deliberate steps to ensure that our society, in the face of the pandemic, is able to function and continues to strive to deliver the results of progress, prosperity, and development for which we all yearn. Saving lives, jobs, and livelihoods, revitalizing our economy, and safeguarding the future of our country have been at the heart of this endeavor. We cannot say that because of the pandemic, we're no longer interested in issues of social justice such as education and health. Education, indeed, is the key to the future of our country. The quality of education that our educational institutions produce ultimately will determine the success or otherwise of our nation. We therefore have to find a way of guaranteeing the prospects of the generation of young people who are the objects of education today and who represent our future. We have to do everything within our power to protect their potential and thereby help preserve our future. We cannot afford to let the pandemic undermine our chances for survival and progress. We have to confront our present and future with confidence knowing fully well that we must remain at all times vigilant and careful. So from tomorrow, operating with half the class size, final year students will begin a six-week period of learning to finish their respective programs. Subsequently, for a period of four weeks, they will sit for their ex exit examinations. It must be put on record that some final year students will not be returning to school as some of them, through virtual means, have already sat their exit examinations. Prior to their return to school, government, 
through the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service, has ensured that all tertiary institutions, public and private, have been disinfected. Universities, with their own hospitals and clinics, have been equipped with the necessary personal protective equipment and have isolation centers to deal with any positive cases. All other institutions, without their own clinics and hospitals, have been mapped to health facilities. There will be no mass gatherings and no sporting activities. Religious activities under the new protocols will be permitted. Social distancing and the wearing of face masks must become the norm on campus. To aid in this effort, a total of 600,000 face masks has been distributed to the tertiary institutions. This is to enable every student, teaching and non-teaching staff, to have three use reusable face masks. In addition to this, 1,700 Veronica buckets, 200,000 liters of hand sanitizers, 3,400 liters of liquid soap, and 900 thermometer guns have been distributed. With the transportation and delivery of these items being overseen by the special logistics team of the government committee, chaired by the sagacious, experienced politician, the Senior Minister Honorable Yao Safumafo, that is supervising the reopening of the schools. I met with the Vice Chancellors of the Universities, both public and private, last Tuesday, who pledged that they would cooperate to ensure that this exercise is effectively undertaken. And I thank them very much for their cooperation. Our intention is to secure the lives of the nearly 200,000 students, lecturers, and non-teaching staff who will be returning to campus from tomorrow. And I appeal to them also to do their bit to help us succeed. I urge them to adhere to enhanced personal hygiene and social distancing protocols. Wash their hands with soap under running water, refrain from shaking hands, and wear their masks to, in, and from the lecture halls and on the campus generally. Fellow Ghanaians, I have to address a matter which has to deal with our case count, especially in recent weeks, and which has given cause for anxiety. The increase in numbers indicates that the virus has spread and continues to spread. We have to bear in mind at all times that the more people we test for the virus, the more people we are likely to discover as positive and thus have the opportunity to isolate and treat them. If we do not test people for the virus, we will not find the persons who are positive, let alone isolate them from the population and treat them and prevent them from spreading the virus. For example, the total number of tests that we have conducted in Ghana with a population of 31 million, 254,331, is one of the highest on the African continent. Furthermore, Many countries in the world, including several of the developed economies, are not implementing a policy of enhanced contact tracing. And this makes our data qualitatively different and more effective in the fight against COVID-19. Indeed, the success of our tracing, testing, and treating will lead, in the end, to a reduction in the number of cases. That so there you have it, the president speaking to us last night. The positive cases are now at 11,964. 
54 people have unfortunately died and recoveries are at 4,258. Yeah. And I like that wearing a face mask is now mandatory. It's for our own good. Over mm. 200,000 students and teachers are going back to school now. Yeah. And if we don't take care, things might get out of hand. So yeah. I think yesterday was really important mm. for the president to address us, to let us know that we are not out of the woods yet, and yeah. we still need to realize that we're dealing with a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think our numbers in terms of percentages and the rates and so on, they are, they are as good and as positive as they were right from the beginning, you know, the, the positivity rate, you know, and so on. But um, I'm concerned about the fact that the active cases are actually increasing, yeah. you know, and for me, that, that's a, a major cause of concern for me. But schools that are reopening our colleague uh michael godu has been out this morning um scouting the different tertiary universities and so on to find out exactly what's going on there michael good morning good morning Kweku. how are you gifa how are you guys <laughs> how are you this morning where are you where are you now uh I'm sure you can see the signboard behind me. It says University of Ghana, Kiafo Hall. That's yes. where we are right okay. now. Wow. Okay. It's raining. It's drizzling a bit. So, yeah, so I have my umbrella up. Uh, guys, I'm sorry I have to leave you in the rain. I have some um, university students here, final year students here, who will be speaking to shortly. Okay. But I have been to uh, McKay, uh, Natford University. I've been to UPSA. I've been to Radford University. And now we are at the University of Ghana to find out um, the measures they put in place for the, the whole COVID-19 protocol and ensuring that they comply with it. And I must say that... Um, the various universities I've been to so far all have Veronica Bucketts at their entrances. Nice. They have the notice of uh, no face mask, no entry. Mm -hmm. uh, at some places also, um, the security personnel at the front desk had their uh, thermometers to check your temperature before you get in. But mm -hmm. then, uh, since I have the final year students here at the Quaffo, let's uh, talk yeah, to let's some of them. Yeah, let's engage them. them. Engage them. Hi, guys. Can you please come closer a bit? Okay, brilliant. The, and they all uh, have okay, their good. face so mask on. Wow. They have their face mask on. Guys, you're on CCTV at the moment. Uh, maybe I'll start with a lady with glasses. Tell me, what's your name and what time did you get to campus today? Uh, my name is Isimu, and um, I got to campus somewhere around uh, 7.40. Okay. Now tell me, what does it feel like to be in school, uh, but to be back in school? I'll talk to you in a ja uh, jacket. Okay. Now, how, is it, how are you going to get used to this whole nose mask thing, wearing nose mask on campus and all of that? Okay. He says he's been using it already, so it's nothing new. Interesting. Nice. But you guys were telling me something about 8 o'clock exam? Yeah. Okay. So we have an exam like that online, but we're expecting the questions around 8. So the questions are now in. You're supposed to read to and then start, uh, start. And we have a time frame from between 8 to 2 o'clock. So we are supposed to finish the exams between 8 to 2 o'clock. So that's what we are actually coming to start. But how prepared are you guys for this exam festival? Well, we left our home, so we are prepared. Now we're yeah. expecting it, so. OK. And what about you? <laughs> okay, uh, Jifa, it's raining here now, so I have to get them up of the okay, rain. Okay, well, thank them so uh, much for spending their morning with us. Yeah, thank you too. And we are running to shop. <laughs> <laughs> so that's right. our colleague Michael Ogbudu at the University of Ghana, and I'm yeah. glad to hear that you know a lot of schools have the veronica buckets yeah they have you know the the soap and everything else mm, no face mm. mask no entry no entry policy yeah yeah if i had a child there i'll be rest assured that yeah. the, the child will be fine yeah no i think it's good i mean in in by all uh the way we are we 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 look at it we analyze whatever is going on it looks like they are definitely being very strict yeah. they're being very purposeful making sure that all the protocols are following. I think it's very, very important because all over the world, we are seeing places where the, the relaxation of restrictions, you know, brought resurgence, yeah. you know, and just because people 
in their in their personal responsibility, you know, didn't do what what was what was needed to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that sometimes we we get into this space, and even in Ghana, we are guilty of that, where we feel as if once the restrictions have been eased, it means coronavirus is gone. Yeah. You know, and I think it's important for us to all bear in mind wherever you are to make sure that you you stick closely to the protocols. Make sure that you're always masking up when you're amongst people. Um, always keep. and uh, thereby have infected yourself, you know, by any chance. So it's important for us to do that. But it's good to see that our schools are slowly yeah. opening up. Especially since last week, the president said that whatever it is that the tertiary institutions do yeah. will set the standard for, you know, more restrictions to be eased yeah. within yeah. our academic institutions. Absolutely. So I think there's a lot of pressure mm. on the tertiary institutions to do well because we know that senior high schools will be going back mm -hmm. next week and mm -hmm. then the following week yeah. we will have the junior high school final year students yeah. so i i'm i'm relieved i'm happy he even mentioned that they're going to get ppes as well so mm -hmm. all institutions will have some access i think three face mask yeah. for the teachers and the students so mm -hmm. i think we're on a right path yeah and i think we'll be fine we can't say life should not go mm -hmm. on because sure. of coronavirus there are other countries where Kids are still, you know, online. They are, they are, they are getting educated. They yeah. are getting ahead. The world and these is are the same ahead. people yeah. we have to compete mm. with on a global scale. Yeah. So we can't put a pause button on mm. educating our, our future generation yeah. when other people are going ahead to invent new things, innovate different things. Yeah. They are the people Absolutely. who are going to take care of us when we are old. So Absolutely. it's good that we've not lost sight of that. Mm. Absolutely. Well, every day we start a show of with a quote. So let's take a look at our quote for today and we'll continue the conversation. So the quote for today comes from Tony Say. Tony Say says uh, he's an entrepreneur and an internet entrepreneur and a venture capitalist. He says, stop chasing the money and start chasing the passion. Stop chasing the money and start chasing the passion. You know, Jiva, I read when I was reading about him, I found out that he's worth Currently, he's worth eight, $840 million. Wow. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, this guy is so rich. And he says, stop chasing the money and start chasing the passion. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he has he has something we should pay attention to. Yeah. yeah. And we're in a generation of passion and, you know, motivational speakers and everything else. But you can't talk about passion without hard work. Of course. Now, the importance of being passionate about this, you don't really feel like you're working hard when you're doing something you love. And sometimes people fall into mm -hmm. love with whatever it is they are doing when they are curious enough. So as you're going through your life, some of us are in jobs that we don't want to be in. Some of us have lost our jobs. We've had to think creatively about how we're going to make ends meet. Find a way to find something in what you're doing that you love so that when you're doing it, you know that at the end of the day, beyond the money, this is the gratification I will get from it. And this is what will keep you going. And yeah. before you know it, you're getting all the success, all the monies, everything you ever wanted, but they were a byproduct of that passion, that drive, that resilience you had. You didn't do all those things. You didn't stay up at night because you wanted the money, but you, because you wanted to leave a legacy behind. And yeah. that's what we all have to keep in mind. Yeah. And this week is the third installment of CBF, yes, right? Yes, City yes, Business yes. Festival. This is the business. week that we do all things business. business. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I'm excited about that. Um, so you can see it there on your screens. Um, kindly call us on 0205-973-973 or 0558-973-973 to join us tomorrow uh, live on TV if you want to be part, uh, participate in the forum. Um, that is going to take place tomorrow. You don't want to miss that. It's at 11 a.m. and it will go right through till 1 p.m. All right. So that's our third installment. The first one was reboot. Second one was on e-commerce. And tomorrow, it's going to all be about agri business. All right. Definitely. And of course, the final one will be Trade Forum. If you want to participate in that, call us on those same exact numbers. Thank you guys so much for joining us for Breakfast Daily. We do have a packed show for you. Later on, Akosi Akonedu Yabdom will be joining us. Yep. He talks to us about gaining weight mm. the healthy way. Yeah. So not just eating carbs on carbs on carbs. But if you are interested in gaining weight and you want to do it the right way, so walk us through it. And of course, our friends at Dane Chef School yeah, will so help us make some tortillas. Egg and avocado. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to miss it. It's an interactive show. 
wherever you're watching us from, I want to hear from you. So use the hashtag Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line. And the WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. If you happen to be outside Ghana, kindly prefix that with plus 233. News Reviews next. We'll go for a quick break and then continue the show. <laughs> There is nothing as hard as a diamond. For buildings with superior strength that withstand all weather conditions, Diamond Cement should be your preferred choice. Locate Diamond Cement nationwide with factories in Aflao, Takrati and Bupe. Diamond Cement, as hard as a diamond. Businesses are evolving with the changing times and the City Business Festival is doing the same. In the month of June, the City Business Festival goes digital. City TV in collaboration with APSA Bank will give SMEs the opportunity to reboot their businesses with expert forums, discussion platforms and interactive Zoom sessions. There will be a lesson for every business. Join the virtual business forums every Tuesday in June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and gain the knowledge you need to kickstart your business. Explore new ways of engaging your customers with the e-commerce forum on Tuesday the 9th of June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get tips from the Agribusiness Forum on how to create another career in agribusiness on Tuesday the 16th of June 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And get all the industry knowledge with the trade forum on the topic. Will export trade be the same again on the 23rd of June 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Revamp your business and work environment this June with the virtual business forums only on City TV every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. To be interactive and ask questions pertinent to your business, join in the forum via Zoom. To participate via Zoom, register by calling 0205-973-973. That's 0205-973-973. City Business Festival is powered by City TV and Absa Bank with support from the Ghana Investments and Promotion Center. Welcome back. It's Breakfast Daily on CCTV. Thank you so much for staying with us. We'll take a look at our newspaper headlines, then some online stories, and then we'll introduce our guests who are already seated here with us. Our first paper is The Chronicle. On the front page of The Chronicle, we have Ivorian experience won't happen in Ghana. Jean Mensah shows TUC Ghanaians. That story is on pages two and three. I will repeal public universities law in 2021. That's coming from, from our president, Mahama. We'll now take a look at the daily graphic. President assures nation of enhanced protocols, safety measures in place to protect students, wearing of masks now mandatory, police to enforce directive. Active COVID cases are now at 7,652. And of course, that story is on page three. Reopening of schools today, government deploys health personnel to institutions. That story is on page 16. And of course, the COVID-19 update is right here. As of June 14th, cases are at 11,964. Recoveries are at 4,258. And unfortunately, we have lost 54 lives. We'll now take a look at the custodian. 
COVID-19 torments Parliament. That story is on page three. First Lady mobilizes Ghanaians to donate blood. That story is on page four. And uh, finally, desperate Ekra Pem South MP aspirant attacks government. That story is on page three. We'll now take a look at the find up. Closure of 53 fund management firms, 90,000 claims hit 12.56 billion Ghana cities. Over 50% of claims validated modalities for payment out in the coming weeks. Reverend Ogbame Tete. We'll now take a look at more stories on the find that government gives NCCE 50 vehicles and 2.5 million Ghana cities for public education on COVID-19. That story is on page 9. Government distributes PPE to schools ahead of reopening today. That story is also on page 9. And finally, government imports 520 multipurpose mini tractors for peasant farmers. That story is on page 8 of the finder. Take a look at our final newspaper and then go on to some online stories. COVID-19 update. Tertiary institutions reopen today as government airlifts distribute PPE to schools nationwide. That story is on page 12. Former President Mahama urges government to withdraw public universities' university bill, but government disagrees. That story is on page 13. We'll now take a look at some online stories from citynewsroom.com. UTAG leadership calls bluff of UG lecturers over impeachment threat. threat sorry. Universities to reopen today after over three months shutdown. Akufuado wishes health minister speedy recovery after COVID-19 infection. Wearing a face mask now mandatory, Akofuado. Secondly, Takwadi mayor died of coronavirus, Akofuado confirms. We'll now take a look at some business news from citybusinessnews.com. Ghana's COVID-19 cases hit 11,422 with 4,156 recoveries and 51 deaths. Greenleaf Vegetable Estate wins season one of Living Fields Agri Challenge. A big congratulations to them. Ghana's COVID-19 case count now 11,118 with, well, that has been updated, of course. The case counts are now 11,964. The current environment doesn't support additional borrowing, economist warns government. SEC upholds revocation of Gold Coast Fund management's license, restores some and suspends others. I want to take a look at some more local news from myjoyonline.com. Wearing a face mask mandatory, offenders will be sanctioned. That's coming from the president, Anato Dankwa Akofado. We'll now take a look at some global news from bbcnews.com. Africa Live, Ghana makes wearing face mask compulsory. Of course, you get all of your news from citynewsroom.com, and you can get all of your business news from citybusinessnews.com. I have been joined by Elvis Dacon, who's the editor of The Finder. Good morning, Elvis. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Yourself? I'm good. Thank you so much for being with us. Good. I also have with me lawyer Kwame Jantua, who's a lawyer and the former vice chair of PIAC. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you? This morning, I'm a bit sad. Why? Uh, I heard of the death of one of Ghana's legends, the Natufu. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad. I mean, uh, the music he made was extraordinary. A big, yeah. you know, extraordinary. So it's sad. I hope he didn't die of COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. But, and all the others, too, who have died this week. Yeah. You know, it's sad, but hey, it's life. 
what, what do you make of the new case counts, the new number of deaths? Well, it's what, 54, 54 now? 54 now, yeah. There are complications to it. Um, the three that we heard, mm -hmm. they had uh, comorbidity issues. Yeah. Even the 31-year-old who also died mm -hmm. had an underlying Health comorbidity condition. issue. So uh, it goes to show that uh, as a country, we are not really looking at those who have high blood pressure and all, all these types of uh, ailments. Mm -hmm. Because I, I guess that is what is killing a lot of people yeah. with this uh, uh, virus, but we also heard today that mm. the virus also mutates, mm. and that's a huge challenge. Yeah. So the uh, NHS have indicated they are going to try and use plasma okay. to be able to uh, control it. But if it started mutating, then that's a huge danger. Yeah, yeah. But I think we'll be fine. <laughs> God is with us. Yeah. But you see, we have to do what we have to do. It's key. The government can put in all the measures and all that. If the protocols aren't observed, the numbers will start okay. spiking. Okay. We'll take a look at our first story. And of course, it's an interactive show. So wherever you're watching us from, we want to hear from you. Use the hashtag Breakfast Daily if you're on social media. And you can reach us directly via our WhatsApp line, 0550585832. If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. I'm reading from City Newsroom, and the story says COVID-19 case count rises to 11,964. Death toll hits 54. Ghana's COVID-19 case count has shot up to 11,964. President Adudan Kwako confirmed this in an address on Sunday, June 14, 2020. So he talked about this, and of course, I'm going to quote him. Understandably, much focus has been placed on the rise in the total number of confirmed cases. As at midnight of 13th June, the 7,964 out of 250,331 tests conducted. He talked about 4,258 patients who had fully recovered as well as 54 people who had died. And then we learned last night that wearing a face mask is now officially mandatory. Leah Jantua, what do you make of all of this? Well, uh, in the president's address, he did indicate that um, we should be looking at the active cases. Mm -hmm. And so far, the active cases are about 7,000 plus. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to look at the overall cases mm -hmm. because what does it do? It gives you an indication of how the virus is spreading. Yeah. So in as much as the active cases are low, in as much as the deaths are low, there is the possibility that the active cases can rise and there's a possibility that the deaths also can rise. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, we've got to be very careful how we handle it very very careful and as I, I i i keep saying the onus is more on the public than on government mm. the government can put in all the protocols if the people don't adhere to it the disease would spike yeah. now i'm not sure whether you watched uh tv this weekend Mm -hmm. I think it was the Japanese who did a sample. Mm -hmm. They had some artificial type of solution, mm -hmm. which can only be seen under UV light. Okay. And they smeared it on a group of people in a restaurant. And the people were eating and, and all that. Touching. When they now switched on the UV light, it showed how many people had touched their faces, how many uh, the surfaces had been touched, the things that they were holding had been touched, and how it spread. Then they did a second one where they did the same thing, but they got people to sanitize, wash their hands before they ate, and all that kind of thing, and put the UV light, and hardly anybody wow. had it on their body. So it goes to show that 
if we don't follow those protocols, we're going to face major, major challenges. When the president says to us that um, it's mandatory to wear face masks mm -hmm. and that you can be arrested, yes, he did say so, huh? mm -hmm. or it can be sanctioned, what is the sanction? Mm -hmm. If the sanction is custodial, that means you go to prison, then it's a huge challenge yeah. because what are we trying to do? We're trying to de-risk the prisons of COVID. Mm -hmm. If you're going to add more people there, then the, ch the, the chances of it rising in the prisons is going to be high. Yeah. Now, I believe and I hope it's a spot fine. Yeah. And if it's a spot fine, who takes that spot fine? Mm -hmm. Is it the police? How is that spot fine paid? Are they going to do it via addresses? How will that be done? So in as much as the president has said it, we need to actually know how this would work out. What's the process? Because if you say it and you don't put a solid process in place, people will just do, people whatever. Will do whatever they want to do. And so for me, that was a huge, huge uh, challenge. Um, it's one thing saying it and one thing doing it. Okay. When you look at, and he also indicated testing, yeah. that because government is testing a lot, that's why these figures are coming up. So some people even really feel like we're not testing as However, much as we I don't think it's testing. You don't think so? No. What do you think it is? I think people have held it mm. in themselves for a long time, and now it has got to a stage where they can't hold it, and they are reporting to the, the, the medical facilities. Mm. Because we thought once upon a time it was the isolation centers that were full, mm -hmm. but no, it's the testing centers that are full. Mm -hmm. And so in as much as they say they are testing, I think people are now also reporting okay. the fact that they've been infected by the virus. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to be very, very careful to make sure that we don't get in a situation where it, it gets out of hand. Mm -hmm. Because our health facilities are not robust enough to handle masses of, uh, of people. Okay. So let's see how it pans out going forward. We've got what, 12,000? Are we 12,000 yet? What oh, we no, 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 no. We are not at 12,000. We are 12,964. So we're not at 12,000. We are, so we are getting there. Yeah, but we're not there yet. By the end of, by the end of mm -hmm. this week, I'm sure we'll get there. Yeah. The other thing, we'll pass the, the other thing that I, I, I'm, I'm also, up, yes, the other thing I'm also uh, uh, concerned about is that. We don't know the actual regions and locations where this thing is spiking or where it isn't spiking. Mm -hmm. We don't know that. And maybe I haven't seen it, but I think of late, the uh, weekly uh, meetings that they used to give us, the mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I, I, I don't see it. Oh, they do. Just some people don't pick it. The, the, well, well it seems it's still the, going the, on. The, 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 social media the impotency has reduced a bit okay and we need to really push, push and force okay to make sure that people adhere to the protocols thank you very much Darajantua. Elvis what do you make of the new case counts you're saying that we'll go past 12,000 by the end of the week we've now made it mandatory for people to wear their face masks yeah I've always said it that's for the cases going up it shouldn't be a, a worry because mm -hmm. the case will definitely go up. If you look at a global situation, every country that has actually reported case of corona, you see an uptake in the cases of the virus. So mm -hmm. for that one, it is nothing new. For me, as I always say, if you are sick, what really we care about is that you recover, yeah. that you do not die. So if we are looking at our figures, as the president rightly put it, if you look at a death rate of 0 0.4 mm -hmm. compared to the number of all test positive, and you compare to the global figures, it's obviously that we thank God that our death rates are lower. Mm -hmm. But if we do not follow the protocols, the death rates could spike. Do you get the sense that people are following it or the, not? The truth is that we are not following the protocols. Okay. Yeah, the truth is that we're really not following the protocols. and. Mm -hmm. It is really, really, really scary. Mm. You go through town and people don't wear masks. Somebody, some of them are just putting on just any cloth or handkerchief or anything. They tie it around their nose and they are walking around that they are in a mask. And that is not a mask. Mm. We've been given a standard of what you should put on as a mask. Mm -hmm. So you can just put on your handkerchief on your nose and be walking around and say you have a mask. No. So if you look around town, obviously, these things should worry everybody that you can see somebody 
any cloth or any dangerous tear it around the nose and it's walking around. It means that we are not following. Mm. You see, by our culture, the way that is this spread, if we are not careful, it will only spike more. Culture plays a key role. BBC investigated why Japan seems to be doing very well with their disease. And they realized that the Japanese culture actually helps them to be able to fight the disease. Hmm. One, in Japan, people don't shake hands. Hmm. So to transmit it through handshake is not something that will happen in Japan. Don't do they don't know that by their culture. But in Ghana, if you don't shake hands, somebody said, what have I done to you? It's like it's composite to shake hands with people who want to make them. So by culture, you can see the difference between Ghana and Japan. In Japan, they say people don't wear their shoes into their rooms. When they come from outside, they leave their shoes outside. So even if it is your shoe that will pick the virus, in Japan, it will not enter the homes of people. In Japan, it's a tradition and culture that once you have any type of cold, you wear mask. Not because of Quran, many, many generations now, once you have any form of cold, you wear mask. So if it is droplets, that will bring it. And the people are already used to mask the very moment they have any form of cold, you can see the culture. Ghana here when you have cold, we sneeze and cough anyhow, anyway. Okay? And if you look at Japan, they say in the advanced countries, if you look at countries with uh, uh, obesity, mm -hmm. Japan has the least in, in even the most advanced countries. So, they have good so, immunity. so in terms of the comorbidities, Japan doesn't seem to have the comorbidities. So BBC investigators are ah, putting all this together by their culture and their way of life, obviously, the process of transmitting the disease, their culture is opposite it. Mm. But when it comes to Africa and Ghana, it's like our culture actually promotes the transmission of the disease. Mm. That is why if we don't pay serious attention to the protocols, we are going to have the disease going up. And if you look at the rate at which the disease is multiplying, the figures that keep coming, it only tells you that something is going on that we must look at. We all don't want to die, so everybody is afraid. But see, when we pay attention more to the fear rather than following the protocols, then we are missing the point. Mm. All health experts I have listened to globally, the scientists who are looking for the, the cure and everything have all told us that, look, we should make up our mind that we are going to stay with this disease for a long time. In the 80s, HIV was like a, a, some, something that's so scary. Today, do you hear anybody talk about HIV? Mm -hmm. As we speak today, over 40 years, there's no cure for HIV. Mm -hmm. We are living with it. So we should begin to understand that we are going to live with coronavirus because the experts who know better are saying that that is where we should be looking at. In fact, Africa should be careful. As we speak, Americans and the European Union and co have signed contract with AstraZeneca, mm -hmm. which is going to produce the medicine that Oxford University scientists say they are almost done with. Okay. No African country has even thought of going to sign any contract to buy the uh, vaccine for its people. Mm. So even if the vaccine is found, Baba, we Madag are missing. Madagascar made some progress with creating their own... What is the progress? All the African action. countries that have gone to buy the medicine, how mm -hmm. many have reported any positive output? Mm -hmm. After all the talk about the efficacy of the COVID organic, are you aware that after all the talk, it is not that people are dying in Madagascar? So if it is so, so efficient as we have been made to believe, mm -hmm. then nobody should be dying at Madagascar. Well, but at the time other, they were talking about it, that it is helping them, that it is helping dying. them, mm -hmm. nobody was dying at that time. Mm -hmm. But after all the talk about the efficacy of the medicine, now people are dying. Mm -hmm. So then where do we stand? Okay. You understand it? Even the medicine that Oxford University is, is preparing, they are mm -hmm. telling us that it can only be 50% effective mm -hmm. against COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's obvious that whether we like it or not, we are going to live with coronavirus for a long time. Okay. There are six strains of coronavirus already. Mm -hmm. None of them has gone away. They are still there. That is why once in a while you hear about the outbreak of bed flu somewhere. Doctors will tell you, medical and a researcher will tell that actually viruses don't go away. Mm -hmm. That is why we will vaccinate against polio for many years and all of a sudden one day you hear that some outbreak of polio is somewhere. So we should begin to prepare our minds okay. to understand that the only way we can progress and make life meaningful and restore to normal life is to understand that we are going to live with coronavirus. Okay. 
And if we are going to live with it, the only way we can live with it is when we abide by the protocols. Okay. If we don't abide by the protocols, we can't live with it. It will kill us. Okay. So we must all make up our mind that it's going to be like malaria. It's going to be like HIV. It's going to be like any other a, a disease that we are living with. People get malaria. Who say, go and declare on Maria status? Nobody cares about that because we have learned to live with it. Mm -hmm. But some time ago, malaria was like a very scary thing to Please the public. So we, we, if we make up our mind and understand that there is no way coronavirus is going away anytime soon, and therefore the only abide by the safety protocols, mm -hmm. then we can return life to normalcy and we can all go about our life. And that is where I think that our attention should be, instead of the fear mongering. Okay. Jiva, just to make much. a quick point, okay. um, when you look at the other uh, illnesses that you talk about, mm -hmm. malaria, HIV, HIV, HIV it's because now we can manage it. Yes, yes. we can manage HIV. Oh, when it happened, it was well, a death sentence. Exactly. Yeah. If we can't manage it, it falls into the ambit of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. It's because we can manage it. I bet mm -hmm. you, if we find uh, a way to manage coronavirus now. Nobody will talk about it anymore. I, I think HIV was even worse than coronavirus. Yeah, and and this, is coronavirus. Yeah, yeah. this is what we are going to do. Yeah. And today, today, today because, we report because, because right now, right now, <coughs> right now, if Ebola gets in now, mm -hmm. everybody will go will scatter Definitely. because we haven't found even a management uh, uh, antidote for Ebola. Yeah. So it all depends on finding the right drugs to be able to manage it. Which, which as for the university says, they are almost close. Mm -hmm. But as I'm telling you, whilst the advanced countries are signing contracts to buy doses for their people, mm -hmm. no African country has thought about even talk, thinking about signing any contract for it. Okay. So even if, the, well, the, if, of, if, if it's found... Finding their own solutions as well, because one of the things we've learned from this experience is that just because someone is a developed country doesn't necessarily mean they know how to handle uh, no, the pandemic. Of course, so. we all understand that. But Elvis, that if, if, we go by your, if we go by your accession of culture, then we are dead, though. Yeah, no, we no, are no. all dead. No, but, 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 then but, we, there's but also if you look at, to be said if you look at the acceleration of the disease mm -hmm. now in Africa, the African CDC is warning mm -hmm. that we should be careful, because now the rate at which the disease is multiplying in Africa is sending very dangerous signals. Mm -hmm. So even, even this week they are signed a contract with China to produce some amount of test kits and ventilators for Africa on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Because the African CDC looking at the rate at which the disease is multiplying is afraid that things are going to get worse. Okay, but, okay. but, but so, Elvis, I, I, think, I think the key would be deaths. Even yeah. if it's multiplying, and people when, recover, uh, exactly, then there's yes, the death bit we should look at. Yes, the death is critical. And, and if we're looking world. at our deaths, we are doing exactly. better. Exactly, that's what they're doing. Yes, right? but Africa Nigeria, is better. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has about fourteen thousand cases, mm -hmm. and the number of people who are dead are almost four hundred. Mm -hmm. So once Ghana's death rate is quite okay, mm -hmm. other countries are not. That, there are countries that have less than thousand cases yeah. but their death rate is even more than Ghana's mm -hmm. uh, uh, death rate mm -hmm. so Ghana may be doing well but it is not the entire continent the death there are rate some that countries that are really not doing well if you compare the death rate and other factors okay so we, we are one country in several uh, uh, countries on the continent mm -hmm. so if we are doing well and others are not doing it's a cause for concern yeah, so Africa. we should all look at it continent. from all this perspective and begin to take the actual steps that will protect all of us because I'm not sure that Ghana can survive it if all the neighboring countries around us are, 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 are under siege. Okay. So we, we should look at it from all the perspectives. Thank you very much. This is still Breakfast Daily on City TV. Up next, we'll be looking at you know the president updating us on what's going on with the help minister as well as what contributed to the death of the second Takrade mayor. We'll also be taking a look at the distribution of PPE to tertiary institutions, among other things. It's still an interactive show. So wherever you're watching us from, use the hashtag Breakfast Daily for us to hear from you. Our WhatsApp line is 0550585832. If you're outside Ghana, you can use the country code plus two three three. We'll be right back. <laughs> Shop online, get free swipes, and enjoy greater security with a card that turns banking on its head. That's Africanacity. That's Absa. Welcome 
back. It's still Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for staying with us. And of course, last night we heard from the president. He told us what's going on with the health minister as well as exactly what contributed to the death of the second Takwade mayor. We'll be hearing from the president again. Uh, but before that, the show is interactive. Wherever you're watching us from, let us know your thoughts with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550. 585832. If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. Let's listen to the president. In conclusion, fellow Ghanaians, permit me to pay brief tribute to the memory of an old and valiant colleague in the struggle of the new patriotic party and in the work of the Akufuado government, the mayor of Sekendi Takradi Metropolis the Chief Executive of the Second D. Takrati Metropolitan Assembly, Honorable K.K. Sam, Aja Sam to me and many, whose efforts in enforcing social distancing protocols of the Second D. and Takrati markets were recently highly commended by me, and who sadly passed away on Friday as a result of a COVID-19 related death. May his soul rest in perfect peace in the bosom of the Almighty until the last day of the resurrection when we shall all meet again. Let us also wish our hard-working Minister for Health, Honorable Kwekwa Menu, MP for Doma Central, a speedy recovery from the virus which he contracted in the line of duty and is in a stable condition. Welcome back. It's still Breakfast Daily. And of course, as you heard from the president there, we unfortunately lost the mayor of Sekendi, Takrati KK Sam, to coronavirus. And the health minister is currently positive for COVID-19. And of course, he contracted it in line of duty. And we wish him a speedy recovery. But what do you make of this? Well, it's a sad situation, isn't it? And it goes to show the vulnerability of frontline workers where um, COVID is concerned. And the health minister was protecting himself, wasn't he? Any time we saw him, yeah. he was in a face mask. So it's, it, it becomes very challenging <laughs> for the of staff to have been infected. We're still reporting yes. to Parliament. So we ask the question, is it good for us to now uh, expose those who have been infected? Mm. Would it be a good thing? And is it because of stigmatization? That's why we feel it won't be right. For me, if I have it, I should be able to tell you I have it. I mean, it's no... Uh, 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 it's no shame to it. It's no shame to it. So if I have it, I need to... And it, it, people then begin to see the reality of this thing, that it is there, it, 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 it it is a lie because I heard on the radio some people didn't believe yeah. that it was there. Do, do you agree with Honorable Bagben's notion that maybe people need a shock therapy to, to, to see that it's real? Or you think if more people come out to say that they are positive, others would, would, would behave If more accordingly? people are coming out to say they're positive, then we won't need a shock therapy. Yeah. But the same way when the lockdown was put in place and people aren't abiding to it, we brought the army on on the roads and we got the police to enforce it the same way we should find a way for people to you know realize that this thing is really true mm -hmm. it's a shame the takrade uh, mayor yeah. i understand he put some good protocols yes. in place especially in the markets and he has contracted it and if he put good protocols in then that means he was also protecting himself yeah, and his driver is positive yes. as well so you ask the question the mass are they really protecting us? Mm -hmm. That's a million dollar question. And perhaps, and yeah, uh, Elvis mentioned the fact that, you know, you need to take your shoes off, the Japanese take their shoes off. Once upon a time when we we're growing up, when you visit somebody's house, you take your shoes off and leave it outside before you go in. Mm. All that is, 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 is gone now. But if the, if the health minister currently has coronavirus and, you know, just last week we heard you know, some people in Parliament have it and they are still reporting. Should we put in place stricter measures to ensure that if you are tested positive, 
you isolate yourself and you don't move about because we know that majority of the positive people don't show any symptoms at all. How do you isolate? We stay home. Yes, the president himself came and told us that lockdown was affecting certain people. So yes. if people but, but isolate... isolating yourself doesn't necessarily mean you're going through a lockdown. You're just what are you temporarily, doing? you know, distancing yourself from people. There are family members who can still bring you food. I mean, we had this whole app from the communication ministry to ensure that people will not move about so that they don't spread the virus. You call it isolating yourself. I'll call it I'm locked down. Okay. Because I can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere I can go. I'm locked down in a particular room. Have we done enough house. to ensure that people actually lock themselves down? No, I don't think so. Okay. Because still people don't understand that this thing is real. Mm. And not until people get to understand it. Initially, people hardly wore face masks. Yeah. Even now, you see people wearing face masks, but sometimes they wear it, they wear it below their nose. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things we should actually look at is mm -hmm. how did the minister get infected. You know, if we don't go down to the nitty gritties, we won't understand how one people get infected. But, but he's at the forefront. Yeah, he's at the forefront, but he's protected himself. Okay. Does it mean that those at the forefront should wear all the stuff that nurses and doctors wear? Mm. You know, somebody made, 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 made a point mm -hmm. that we might be having low active figures. Yeah. However, if those low active figures supersede the number of healthcare uh, practitioners mm -hmm. on the front line, it's a danger. Yeah. Because if they are higher and doctors and nurses are also infected and it's lower, who treats, who treats them? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of complications with COVID-19. And as I said, COVID-19 is a rascal. It's mm. finding ways. We go this way, it goes that way. It goes this way, it goes that way. So we have to get to a point where we put strict measures down and make sure it is followed okay now I don't know what's happening in the rural areas mm -hmm. and I'm not sure you know or Elvis knows could it be that in the rural areas this thing is even worse because we, we haven't heard anything anything we hear is more in the urban sectors than the rural sectors we need to be able to yes test and be able to make sure people are adhering to the protocols. thank you very Thanks. much Elvis what do you make of the news that the health minister has coronavirus and that the second D. mayor died from coronavirus-related you know, complications? Well, for the mayor, may his soul rest in peace. As I always insist, when we fall sick, the expectation that we all have is that we will get That's stronger right. and come back to our family. So if somebody falls sick and at the end of the day will not return back to the family, it's a very sad moment and I sympathize with the, with the family for their loss. Uh, for the health minister, I say, in, in, in the world that we live in, we call something people's privacy. Okay. And therefore, people's health are considered as their private matters that it is the individual that determines whether he or she mm. wants to make it public or not. Mm. So for that, it is not in question and it is in law. And therefore, we all obey. Mm -hmm. But I have always said that if you go and accept a public office mm. duty, then you must understand that everything about you is to be open to the public that is why it is called a public office mm -hmm. so when you are a public official i think there are things that private people can keep to themselves but as a public official you can keep to yourself what if you as, don't want to cause panic as the as the man leading the fight against the disease mm -hmm. and we are having issues with with stigmatization if you have it i think is the best for the, that person to make it public for us. Mm. And that's why you, you, I want to commend somebody like Papa Usu Ankuma, mm. living far away in the UK. Mm -hmm. But when he got it, he made the whole of Ghana know through an mm -hmm. official student that I have the disease. And the CEO I'm going of, to um, treatment. And when really. after he was treated and he got healed, he still informed yeah, us that, yeah. thank God for your prayers, I'm healed and I'm back yeah, to post. Yeah. That is what we call public office. Mm -hmm. So I, I just believe that the health minister, if I were him, being a public official, I think it was so good for him, a brilliant opportunity for him to help all of us as a nation to actually fight the stigmatization. And it's not a missed opportunity. That's why I'm happy that the president has come out to say it. 
Should because, the president have said it earlier, or should you know? Well, I don't know why the president got the information, okay. so I cannot say that president. But you think he should have even said it? Yes, he, he himself. He a tweet, okay. a Facebook post, something could have put that issue out there. Okay. And a coronavirus is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Ghana, for instance, almost twelve thousand cases, and we are talking about over four thousand recovering and fifty-four dead. So it's obvious that coronavirus is not a death sentence. But it's the not, people who have died too, that's that's a cause for worry, especially no, if you have the second no, party mayor dying. That's what I'm telling you. That. It's you not know? everybody who gets corona who will die. Yes. So if we are looking at the recovery rate and those who have died, mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. are higher okay. than those who are dying. Mm -hmm. So as the health minister leading the agenda, I believe that he should have himself made that public. You think that and would have brought a lot of public confidence? It, will in bring, it, will, it definitely. Everyone will say, uh, if the minister... Who is Chad? You know, in the UK, it was the health minister who was the first public official mm -hmm. to make it public that she had coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And when the prime minister had it, he, he himself went and did a video and put it on social media that I mean, I, I've been diagnosed with coronavirus. So I think that when you are in public office, there are things that you have to do differently Done. compared to those who are in, in uh, yeah, uh, called, uh, private culture. life. It's called it's yeah. private life. <laughs> okay, and we this have to is move why, on to this the story is why I want to draw attention to something that's very important. Okay. The way we are burying those who are dying, I disagree. Okay, how do you want us to bury them? I want us to let the family have a better role to play. Okay. All they need to do is to make sure that the family doesn't have contact with the, with the body. Mm. Let the public health official handle the body. Okay. But if my family dies and I want my family to be taken to my village, allow me to take the person to my village. Mm -hmm. You transport the body for me. Let me organize my funeral. It will even go a long way to let the people in my village know that the thing is real. Mm -hmm. But it is as if we want to bury everybody who dies from the disease in Accra. In Accra. Okay. And we are trying to separate the dead body from their family as if the, the role they are supposed to play is so limited. Okay. It also adds to the stigmatization. But is it just Ghana that's doing that? No, no but... No, but, it's not, but no. That's what I'm saying. See, there's a way of doing everything. Mm -hmm. If we have realized that stigmatization is becoming a problem, there are strategies we have to go about to but be able is to make it better. stigmatization with the dead bodies or with people being afraid that once someone is positive, they can also catch it? The so stigmatization they are, they is all about ignorance. the actions we take. Ignorance? The way you bury the person, hey, hey, even if you die with the disease, if your family, they will even bury you without your family consent or something. With that family, will just be left somewhere and be buried. Okay. So let's give people confidence that it is not, the body is what may be contaminated that you don't want the family to have access to. Okay. If I said transport the body to my village, let the public health, I've seen it in other countries where do they wrap think, the coffin, mm -hmm. they wrap the coffin in, in, in plastic. Do you think we've done enough mm -hmm. on the grassroots level as far as educating people on that, exactly what we haven't done, is? We haven't done, we haven't done, that's why I'm happy that have. the NCC, NCC now has, has 50 vehicles that they can the go out there and some funding to buy the fuel okay. to go out there. Okay. We need to do more. I have because to wrap as up, I said, always. we are going to live with it. So mm -hmm. it is letting people understand how to live with it. That's okay. the most important thing. Okay. So things that make people have that kind of fear or stigmatization, mm -hmm. we should try and reduce it. So me, I'm advising that if it will be proper, mm -hmm. let the public health official handle the body mm -hmm. from wherever the person died. If I say take the person to my village, mm -hmm. you bring the person, I'll pay for the cost of the transportation. Okay. But you are the expert to handle, handle it for me. Let me organize my federal in my village. Right. But don't force to bury my body in Accra because the person died in Accra out of COVID. Okay. It's all create the stigmatization. Thank but you very much. Thing, there's, I there's do there's have one, to move there, on. So sorry, there's one, there's one thing you're missing. The people who are sending to the village, do you know whether they are asymptomatic and they can also infect others? No, that okay. is why there's... You don't group. know. No, that's why there's so, rules so, of how to so, organize so, the so, so, so I, 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 I believe mm -hmm. if that, we have to do it the way we're doing it and it will stop the no, infections, that, let's go that, ahead. Why you're okay. talking about so asymptomatic, to, if someone died in the village and it's not even COVID, people go. If asymptomatic people go, they will go. Okay, we so have to we don't move have on to now. We're going to take excuse. a look at our next stories in the find And of course, the show is interactive. So wherever you're watching us from, use the hashtag Breakfast Daily for us to hear from you. Our WhatsApp line is 0550585832. If you're outside Ghana, please use the country code plus two three three. On page nine in the final, we have government distributes PPE to schools ahead of reopening today. The government on Saturday started airlifting quantities of personal protective equipment 
alcohol-based hand sanitizers, Veronica buckets, packets of soap and tissue papers to 234 tertiary educational institutions in all 16 regions ahead of reopening today. It goes on to talk about a number of items, 600,000 units of reusable face mask, 200,000 milliliters of hand sanitizers, 1,700 Veronica buckets, 34,000 tissue papers, and 34,000 packets of soap, as well as 900 thermometer guns. An extra 10% of the logistics have been added to cater for contingency situations. It goes on to talk about about 200,000 staff and students are supposed to benefit from the logistics, and that comprise of 44,000 teaching and non-teaching staff, as well as 128,000 students. Lawyer Jantua, what do you make of this? We know that the tertiary students have officially started school uh, during the first day. Our colleague Michael Obudu, you know, uh, called in to show us students going back to school, and they've been provided with these things to make sure that they are fine. Is it enough? Who is going to monitor these things when it gets to the schools? Mm -hmm. Don't want to hear a situation where some teacher or somebody has now hoarded this, hoarded it, mm -hmm. or, or is selling it, and if the the the, the uh, these PPs are getting into the schools who is going to make sure that it is situated at the right place and it is done properly mm -hmm. for me I believe that if reopening of schools is going to work is still predicated on the protocols okay. young people can be blasé young people can take things for granted young people might not practice the social distancing mm -hmm. and so it's up to the schools to make sure that they force them to do it now with the boarding schools they sleep in dormitories don't they yeah. and those of us who went to boarding schools the beds are very close together no I think now they're gonna they're going to do all of those things and they fumigate the schools that, yeah they're going to do it yeah. and we are sure they will do it yeah, yeah. who is monitoring mm -hmm. That is going to happen. And there's a special I task can force bet your bottom city mm -hmm. that as we, as the, the, the media starts reporting how these things are done, mm -hmm. you will find there will be some schools that haven't done it. Okay. Now, the danger would be if within the schools the infection also rises. Mm -hmm. I think somebody should monitor it. Okay. Every student before they enter the, the, the school should be tested and there should be constant monitoring of whether the virus is interacting in there or isn't. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we can have an explosion that will be very difficult to control and will take us back to square one. Thank you. Elvis. Oh, for the schools, I think it's a good move. They needed these things. And I have observed something which we should also pay attention to. Okay. It's like institutions that receive these things from government or as donation place it at the places and make sure people use it. Two things run out, the tissues and the hand sanitizers and the soap. Yes. These three do run out. Unfortunately, it's not, it's not like some of these, when it runs out, they, they, they don't have the funds or they just will not buy to replace. Mm -hmm. So the Veronica market will be there for water, it's easy to put. There's but no you soap. go, there's no soap, there's no hand sanitizer, and there's no tissue. Should, should people so, take personal responsibility so for these things at least? So we should look at these things and be careful. Yesterday, actually, it was a discussion we were even having on a particular platform. Mm -hmm. A lady has put on a social media that you went to Kolebu, one of the emergency wars, and in the, that theater, there was no hand sanitizer. So we're having a discussion. And then somebody also came to say, he actually went to a police station, and then the bucket is there all right, mm -hmm. but there's no soap, there is no uh, 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 tissue, there is no hand sanitizer. So we should look at it in, in perspective that the bucket being there is not what cleans the virus. Mm -hmm. It's the soap. The soap is the critical thing. So if we can have the things that the soap will not be there, there will be problems. So these schools, I know most of them will tell you that they are publicly funded. They mm -hmm. expect money from government. Yeah. Government has brought it. We have used it. It's finished. We don't have the money to replace then it becomes an issue. So we should look at it. And I'm happy that we are starting from the final year, especially for the university. I know many of them are writing exams online. Mm -hmm. So many are not actually reporting to campus. It is when we go in for the SHS and the BEC students when they go back to school. 
I pray that we make sure that for the water, for the soap and the hand sanitizers, they may have more than they need so mm -hmm. that we don't have this short supply. Mm -hmm. Then we can say that something is happening. But if we go to a situation where the water will be there, but there will be no soap, there may not be hand sanitizer, there may not be tissue, our purpose will be defeated. So I urge every school head to, to take responsibility of this. And then these people who are going to school are not kids, they are adults. Yeah. So at homes, we should be able to ingrain it in their mind and their look. You, used, you are used to a certain lifestyle, but now things have changed. So once we are going back to school, make sure that you don't go and expose yourself. It's Thank very you. important. So but, we'll have but, some but, messages but, but, from but, you but, that but, I have to but take but shortly. The, okay, briefly. Um, parents to have responsibility yeah. to give extra soap, extra tissues to their wards to go to school. SHS exactly, and GHS exactly. students. Exactly. We all have responsibility, so it's yeah. not only government. Government, definitely. So we'll take a look at some of the messages you've sent us. Abdul Ramahan says, fighting this COVID-19 is the shared responsibility of every Ghanaian and must not be made political. Testing positive for COVID-19 by the health minister, Kwekwajaman Menu, and some of our MPs in parliament should not be demoralized uh, as, a, as a nation. We should not be demoralized because if a medical doctor, a nurse, or a farmer can be infected by the disease, any other person, including MPs and ministers, are not exempted. AU Falk from Tamale says, wearing of face masks is compulsory now, but government must provide more face masks to Ghanaians, especially those in rural areas. Uh, Norbert Tenu from Nungwa says, I believe that being infected with COVID-19 pandemic is not a sin, but if it would be very helpful that the parliament knows the health status of all members to enable the majority side in Parliament tell EC the truth about the dangerous situation in which they want to put us as a nation. Uh, Mystic from Nsawam says, mm. it is undoubtedly true that in my view, the president has not done well for Ghanaians. He is a, he, okay, all right, you say he, he's good at talking, all right. Should graduation from school be a life or death matter? We have seen countries where final year medical students have been have graduated without writing exams to join doctors treating COVID-19. Our authorities are not thinking out of the box. If students have to go back, why keep them in school for six weeks for revision? Even if they have to go back, should it be just to write exams for one to five weeks? Should students die just because they must write progression exams at this time? This comes from Moses in Bowie. And I think, you know, not every student has access to internet and all these things. So they, they already explained why. So keep those messages coming with the hashtag breakfast daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550 If you're outside Ghana, please use the country code plus 233 and we will still receive your messages. Take a look at our final story here. I'm reading from the finder. I'm sorry, the Chronicle. The Chronicle has, a growing experience won't happen in Ghana. Jean Mensah assures TUC and Ghanaians that that story is on page three. So the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Mrs. Jean Mensah has assured the Trades Union Congress and Ghanaians as a whole that the electoral violence that happened in Ivory Coast a few years ago would not happen in Ghana. I'm going to quote what she said. I do not believe that Ghana will experience the situation that occurred in Cote d'Ivoire and other countries. And, and she goes on to say how, as a commission, they are committed to ensuring that our elections remain transparent and open, and it involves all stakeholders. Lawyer Jantua, what do you make of How of does this? she know? How does she know that the, the, what happened in Cote d'Ivoire can happen here? Do you think we are at that point where that could happen? Well, when you disenfranchise people, it could happen. It could happen. Because right now, uh, they interviewed uh, one of the uh, uh, Electoral Commission people yesterday mm -hmm. on another station, and the question was asked. So those who are in lockdown outside the country, what are you going to do to make sure that they also get registered? Mm -hmm. What's the plan B? For those people and said there's no plan B they will only register people who are within here now or who can present themselves and if it so happens that you know the lockdown in those countries are open and they come back and they are not uh, they didn't have the opportunity to register and we are voting and they can't they can't vote 
isn't that a cause for, 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 for challenges? Yeah. It's a huge cause for challenges. So if the Electoral Commissioner says that there would not be an Ivorian uh, kind of situation here, she should tell us how there would not be. You just don't make a statement and leave it open like that. Tell us how it might not happen. We hope it does not happen. We hope that this, this, this thing they're doing, this registration they're doing, will go according to plan. But when you look at the number of comments that have come from political parties, from the clergy, from ordinary Ghanaians, and the Electoral Commission is still insistent when it doesn't need to be a Côte d'Ivoire situation. Small mayhem can cause a lot of infractions for everybody, can cause a lot of discomfort for everybody. And so I believe that we've gotten to a stage where we should critically look at it. Mm -hmm. I would love a situation where the Electoral Commission with political parties would come to City FM, sit down and talk to the people one on one. Tell us why you think such a thing won't happen. Have a people, people there, or even in a town hall, have people there to ask the Electoral Commission questions that are worrying you know, people about registration. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a wrong thing to compile a new register, but it's the things that go with it that can cause, create mayhem. That is the, 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 the problem. Okay. We have to be able to make sure that what we're doing would inure to everybody's benefit. Thank you. I don't think we should, uh, uh, when you look at, is it Article 42 of the Const uh, Constitution, mm -hmm. which indicates that everybody has the right to vote, we shouldn't disenfranchise anybody, no matter the situation. Thank you. Elvis. Well, I don't know what premise you're speaking from, because what I know about Ivorian conflict has nothing to do naturally with citizenship. Mm. It is about after an election and a sitting president refusing to hand Indeed. over power. So I don't know what she's, she, I don't know what the, the issues were she's and why she's made that statement. Mm -hmm. the, what brought about the Ivorian conflict, although people will say there were underlining issues about citizenship and the, the critical issue that there was an election. Somebody won the elections. And the sitting president said, I will not hand over. But when you have people in the NDC saying they don't agree with this, we're going Please, to go the on. The NDC is not the Electoral Commission. This, yes, this, but then don't you create issues in, in, there is in no the months issue to come any, if there is the no results issue come out anywhere. and people say they don't agree? There is no issue anywhere. Let's stop this. People, is it, why did we create a constitutional body to do their job? Mm -hmm. You have given me a job. I said this is how I have to do the job for you to get the result that we'll be happy about. Mm -hmm. I don't need anybody to dictate to me. But what if stakeholders feel like they are not being included in some of the decisions? Included that have been in made? what? Included in what? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have you see, in this era, this year, twenty three African countries are supposed to go for elections in various some other referenda, local elections or national elections. Mm -hmm. Because of COVID. Some have decided that they will reschedule because theirs is closed within this period. Others, about 14, have decided that they are going ahead with the elections. Mm -hmm. In, within the COVID, five African countries had elections. We had Mali, we had Benin, we, had, uh, uh, we have Burundi. We have about five African countries holding elections, even within the COVID. Mm -hmm. We are going to have an election in December. Mm -hmm. But prior to the elections, preparations have to take place. Yeah. So if the preparation that has to take place to give an election, credibility has to be done. It Please has to be done. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand all this back and forth and all this. Stuff. Without a credible electoral register, you cannot have a credible election. Thank you that very much, Elvis. That is something Dacom we must take. is the editor of The Finder and, of course, lawyer Kwame Janswa is a former vice chair of PIAC. We have a message from one of our viewers, Senyo. He says, to answer Kwame Janswa's question, only then N95 mask protests fully from COVID-19. That and not touching your face, your eyes, and your nose. Thank you guys so much for staying with us. Up next, we'll be talking to Akosia Konedu Yadom about gaining weight the healthy way. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.
76,000 US dollars only to buy you a studio apartment in Accra. Why not come to Wedi for a spacious two-bedroom apartment at Alphabet City, our brand new gated community situated right on top of the serene Sakomano Lagoon, feeling like splashing a little. Check out our exclusive all detached house gated community, the Jaden Symphonic next door. Sizes range from cozy three bedrooms to luxurious five bedrooms. We at Wedi are committed to provide you with the best building quality and value for money. In fact, we are the proud recipient of 2019's Quality Property Firm Award. We are offering discount up to 5% on the JD Symphony or 10% on Alphabet City, who makes a commitment in December. Call us now at 0240-111119 or 0504-499999 to secure your dream home now. Data, extra minutes, and extra unlimited calls. Not just that. Even our extra data doesn't expire. See this up? Simply dial star one 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 hash to bundle now. Airtel to go. Life is simple. There are those with untold stories, unravelled feats, life-changing stories, and lasting legacies. They tell their stories themselves, right here. On footprints. So we go to someone we were put in our various cells, and then you know, someone you have a huge, it's a huge prison. And then it was then that it dawned on me that I was really a big club. Do you think that um, the overthrow of Liman was justified? I think that uh, with hindsight, there was no justification. Be inspired by their hard work and resilience that led to those outstanding achievements as we trace their footsteps through the capsule of time because of my upbringing my mother my father they are you know christianity yeah. so because of that you know I strong hands strong, at home even though i'm the guy smoking doing all kinds of that i've never tried you never tried no no never tried weed or anything nothing. you've never, never tried weed even drinking you know alcohol no why is you people Put everything, go and go and go and go. Everything was done before Nkuma arrived in the country. No, I hold the lever here. I hold the lever here. The yeah yeah, the quicker you will be. So join me, Samuel Atamensa, and my guests every Saturday at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 4 p.m. Only on City TV. Footprint is sponsored by Bethel Logistics Company Limited experts in shipping logistics. We're about to change your Sunday night for the better. Prophecy is not for useless things and you lose frivolous things. Mm. Prophecy is for weightier matters. We'll and bring you the most captivating guests and explore the most amazing stories. And I was going to be an actor. Oh, wow. oh yeah, I, I had an audition at Nafti once. Oh, what was this? No, oh, many years ago when I was in ATTs. Did, did mm. you get a role? I didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Right. Yeah. We will dazzle you with real life situations and examine mind blowing topics. Illustrating the message or signifying the message makes people grab whatever you are trying to say or communicate much easily. Join me, Fremer Binyami, and me, Ato Kwamna, every Sunday at 7 p.m. on City TV. Are, Are you ready? ready? Upside Down, every Sunday, 7 p.m., only on City TV. Businesses are evolving with the changing times and the City Business Festival is doing the same. In the month of June, the City Business Festival goes digital. City TV in collaboration with APSA Bank will give SMEs the opportunity to reboot their businesses with expert forums, discussion platforms and interactive Zoom sessions. There will be a lesson for every business. Join the virtual business forums every Tuesday in June at 11am to 1pm and gain the knowledge you need to kickstart 
about your business. Explore new ways of engaging your customers with the e-commerce forum on Tuesday, the 9th of June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get tips from the Agribusiness Forum on how to create another career in agribusiness on Tuesday, the 16th of June, 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And get all the industry knowledge with the Trade Forum on the topic. Will export trade be the same again on the 23rd of June, 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m.? Revamp your business and work environment this June with the virtual business forums only on City TV every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. To be interactive and ask questions pertinent to your business, join in the forum via Zoom. To participate via Zoom, register by calling 0205-973-973. That's 0205-973-973. City Business Festival is powered by City TV and Absa Bank with support from the Ghana Investments and Promotion Center. Shop for Kanta, yeah. we get eyes but can't see bribery and corruption. Our leaders say take it but don't give. Make a ask in Kruma, where you dead? No, be you toxic, my beloved. Ghana is free forever, but still, we the suffer. Beloved country is free forever, but episode is so far. Yeah, yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Some bread and butter. Since they spoil, we know they bother. Then they use four million dollars just for soccer. Cause big man go taking cats. These kind of things are no way back. They say the year of returning be like the white man for colonies we again before we wise up. <laughs> Welcome to Ghana. When you see Koti, it be by for you for Roja. The church is in the business center. Sell the sticker to protect me by the preacher. Get the bouncer. Make a ask, where them they? Our missing children, where them they? The Takradi girls, where them they? Me, I'm not afraid to say, Kruma, where you there? Don't be you talk, say, my beloved country is free forever. But we kill in each other. Martin Luther, where you there? Where you there? No be you don't say your black Americans are free forever. Not the killing each other. Black life matters, so we sing. Ah, 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 ah. What are they? What are they? Breakfast. Ah, ah, on the daily. Cause what are they? What I did, listen, hey, yeah. what I did, 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 you know why? Corona, they kill you, man, be for no reason. What I did, President say stay home, but you they come out, what I did. 
They say those marks, I know they wear mine, but my own day, yeah. While I day, social distancing and everything to save human beings. While I day, while I day, while I day. My name is Sapphire, so we are the last first time I'm going to talk to the people. Eh? Baka. Yeah. Hey. Problems after problem. Too many talent, but tell me who goes up for them. You promise my people. One district, one factory, yet we never see them. Plenty million branding bars, but in Kolibu, they treat people like trash. ECG or PDS, you tell me who I go pay money to before I get the light. With the chop CD, my leaders are paid in dollar. Duty so high goes, they rot for the border. Music, she know they get in royalty. They give him money for creative industry, but still with the sofa. Gamro, Pukyomen, Bukin, Ganamano. Don't come to the ghetto, come bravo. Then you done tired with the lies and the fake promises. So in Kuma, where you do? Say my beloved country is free forever. At the episode and breakfast daily, why you dead? Why you dead? No, be you that say your people of Africa are free forever. Now we're killing each other. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. What all I do? Wa ala de yeah yeah ah yeah wa ala de wa ala de where the money go de yes I don't know are you supposed to represent the man so represent for the woman them same way so you know I just want to do. The song featuring Sarkozy for the woman them worldwide, is it? Just like you seen a lot of girls, but when they made last stop, you, you flying to my world, you don't need a passport, girl, you, 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 you. Yeah, peace, I will go that for you, I put my hands up, yeah, you, you, it's you. Me and you, pe, I said it, busume, bu, ma, jimmy, pe, na, yem, pa, pe, bloom, ba, oh, jays, yem, bali, six shots, tequila, yem, clock, hey, see, my girl got a wicked body, boys, me, rush, you know, ba, me, ma, chunk, hey, who treat best me up hard and I'm a pocket Forget to work on it's not me I know Feeling I never get sick of the other Me newa Odo me newa Odo me newa I say I never get sick of the other Me newa So I got it goes like, eh, hey, hey. boys penno, a more hannish is kinda picky. Fraud boys, bank manager, Kwame Mickey, go less, the richest people in the city. Still I would jan and one my mini now with Titi. On the rail, she be clean, keep her the honey. Make a sapina, that she be na me, I'm about my money. Or come me home, release is in a nasa sunny. We did the crowd was so adore, you be you honey, nasa we know the bad. Then I don't know what to call this kind of love. Send me cause you see what I'm putting on the bar. Are the episode I represent with Park and Live on Break Fast? Odo Menea. 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 Welcome back. That was episode. Beautiful music there by episode. Well, it's time for us to talk nutrition this morning. In our nutrition segment, we have a nutritionist 
Akusia Kuneru Yadam. She's going to help us to understand how to gain weight through good nutrition. We're going to talk, of course, about body types and all of that as well. Good morning, Akusia. How are you? It's good to have you here. How have you been doing? I'm well. Yeah. Just good, but mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about um, nutrition and um, body types, how to gain weight properly. You know, when I saw the the the, the topic, mm -hmm. I was fascinated yeah. because some people actually want to put on weight. You know, I I you know we always think about people want to lose weight, right? Yeah. But some people actually want to. Put yes, on I weight. want to put uh, on weight. Okay, <laughs> so then they, I, it's good that we can talk about it and say how do you do that in a healthy manner? Okay, so. Um First and foremost, you need to know your body type. Mm. Yeah, so, yes, I am putting on weight, or Akosua looks this way, and somebody is there thinking that, oh, because she's a nutritionist, she's probably doing everything. Mm. But I'm here to tell you that this topic is also for me. In as much as there are people who want to lose weight, there are others who want to, want to put on Game weight. weight yeah. But it's also important for us to know that where do I even fall? It's something that we don't do here. Mm. If I should meet the average uh, the uh, average Ghanaian uh, in town and ask, okay, so what's your body type? It will be something that will be difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. We have the mesomorph, mm -hmm. we have the endomorph, and then we have the ectomorph. So yeah. you should know where you fall. And you realize that, um, oh, we don't realize, the endomorphs, mm. they kind of, um, let me start with the act two, that's myself, we, we struggle to gain weight. Mm. So if you are somebody who belongs to the group, an ectomorph, ectomorph, it means that you struggle to gain weight. And we have the endomorphs. Yeah. They have a very slower metabolism, and so they can easily gain weight. And yeah. we have the mesomorph. They are kind of like in between. They are people who can easily put on and can easily also shed off. Yeah. So you should know your body type. And I always say that we are always hitting the gym. I lost 4 kg going to the gym trying to maintain. So if <laughs> I met a good instructor, yeah. he would have taken me through the kind of workouts yeah. plans that I, I needed to be involved. I was doing the treadmill which was bad for my body type okay. because I'm ectomorph. Mm. Yes. And then then I don't even have to be hitting the gym every day if I am ectomorphic or if you belong to the ectomorph category. Yeah. If you struggle to put on weight, you don't have to be hitting the gym. The maximum you can do is three times in a week. Mm. And you don't even go beyond 45 minutes. And you should also make sure that you study and know your percentage body fat. This is very critical and it's very, it's very technical. So you may need or you will need a nutritionist, a professional yeah. one, to guide you as far as your caloric intake is concerned. You need to increase your carbohydrate intake per kilogram body weight. So if you have, let's say, total body fat below 15%, yeah. you need to make sure you are doing eight caps. If you are within the less than 15 percentage body fat, you have to make sure you are doing 4.3 grams as far as protein is concerned per kilogram body weight. Okay. So let's say that I'm 50 kg. Mm -hmm. So per my kilogram body weight, as far as my carbohydrate intake is concerned, I have to multiply that by the eight, uh, um, 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 eight grams of carbos. So that will be my carbos. And for the 4.3 per my kilogram body weight, that multiplication will also be done. And for body fat, you need one gram per body kilogram. So that is, I've said it, it's, it will be easy for some people to understand. For others too, they need, um, they will need some clarification. But I know that your questions will probably okay, so, bring them up. Okay, so you're saying that if you're, if you're looking at fat intake, you should be doing one gram per, per body, kilogram body per weight. kilogram. That is for day you are working out. I said that for the seven days in the week, you work out three times mm -hmm. in a week. And yeah. for the days you are working, because you realize that for us ectomorphs, mm. that is the reason for this di uh, discussion, we kind of lose easily. So for us, we need to make sure we are replenishing very fast. So what I will even advise you to do, if you have a good coach or you are with a good fitness um, um, club or you yeah. are using a good gym, the instructor should be able to guide you. But if you don't have, yes, this is why we are here, you'd have to make sure that you are having a shake or something to work out with or you take it 
an hour to your workout okay. so, session. So I'm more interested in, uh, for, 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 for now, the figures that you're giving, right? Okay. So if you're saying one kilogram of fat per kilo of body weight, right? So if I'm 50 kilos, for example, it means that for every kilo of my body weight, I should be taking one. one gram, right? Which means that for 50 kilos, I shouldn't be taking more than 50 grams Thank of fat. Thank you so That's much. If means, you are right? working Super. out. Okay. Okay. I think that helps to clarify. So then the, the same goes with the eight grams yes, per, kilo per kilo of body weight. Yes. And that's for what? That's for, that's for like carbohydrates. carbohydrates. Okay. The day you are not working out, that is like your slow down you should, time. You should, take you should even do less. seven. Seven. Okay. If you are working out, you take eight. So, depending on your body. So let's do the calculation for viewers. So, if it's eight per kilo of body weight, and I'm fifty kilos. Eight five. Four, then it's eight times five times fifty. Right? So that's four hundred. So that's yeah. Four hundred grams. Okay. Yes. Four hundred grams maximum of carbohydrate if you're working out yes okay. and then you need for the protein is 4.3 mm. per kilogram body okay. weight you do that calculation just like okay. you did and you get it so okay. that is what you need to do but um you need to also make sure you what happens if you take more than that hmm. now there is a release and you need you need to make sure that protein is also working effectively because we need to build on our muscles yes. or we need to bulk up mm -hmm. we need to build up so now if there is a lot as far as carbo is concerned it makes insulin it, it, it you get insulin resistance because there is kind of we've discussed it there is a release of a lot of glucose or sugar okay. in, in in the system so insulin resistance can step in mm -hmm. and instead of um protein being able to work effectively kind yeah. of impedes the work of protein and at the end of the day instead of you building up you end up not getting the results you want. Okay, all right. So let's talk about the how do we gain with good nutrition? Okay, so um, first and foremost, there are foods. Um, obviously, eating a balanced diet mm. will help you will help you as far as your weight gain is concerned yeah but for some people there is a need for supplementation and you need to make sure you are increasing your intake as far as protein is concerned because we know that protein even as children is for building of muscles yes. and that's what we are trying to do so these are some of the examples of um, foods we can eat to make sure we are gaining weight mm. avocado is always the yeah. avocado is good we have potatoes we have red meat and I will, I will humbly advise you to do the lean part. Yes, and then we have whole grains. We have mm -hmm. salmon, we have cheese, we have cereals, we have milk, most importantly, and dark mm -hmm. chocolate. We have a recipe um, to share with viewers and so we'll see how best we can incorporate some of these ingredients into our shakes to make okay. sure we do our, our workout session or before and after sessions okay. wet. So those are examples. And then we have, we've spoken about milk, whole meals, we have nuts, and then for um, healthy oils or essential oils, yeah. nuts contains essential mm -hmm. oils, foods like salmon, and it has healthy oils as well. We have increased caloric intake. We'll speak about that. I know the questions will come out. And then you should increase your quality of sleep. You should mm. make sure you have enough rest. Yes, that's also a good a good way to help you as far as weight gain is concerned. And then the supplements I've spoken about it, um, uh, weight gainers. That one you need mm. a help the help of a professional yeah. to be able to choose the best one for you. So I can sit here and give examples, and then or they will need to even come and pay invoice to city, <laughs> and then we need to get whey protein. Okay. Yes. All right. So. For those of you who are watching us right now, if you have any questions or comments you want to make, uh, the hashtag is Breakfast Daily on all social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and um, also um, we have a WhatsApp line, it's 0550-585-832. If you have any questions for Akosi, I kindly send that through. All right. Now, you said something interesting. Quality sleep mm -hmm. is eight hours not guaranteed for quality sleep sometimes quality sleep doesn't um, always have to do with the the, the, the time of time Kukudi, are people who sleep with lights on research says that if you want to have a sound sleep you mm. should make sure that at least an hour before 
you can be absorbed in your sleep, your lights are turned off. Okay. It helps you to calm down. It yeah. helps you to kind of relax. It helps to prevent any interaction because if I am sleeping and there are lights on, you enter and I have to. Yeah. I have to. I have to wake up. There are interactions, so you need to make sure that you are having a sound sleep, uninterrupted mm. sleep. So that is a way of helping. And with sleep too, if I, I don't have to bring it in here, but the tendency to sleep late sometimes will also um, elevate your appetite level. In this way, mm. we want to gain weight, but we are not saying that you shouldn't rest well. But let's say I have to be sleeping at eight, but I'm sleeping at ten. Yeah, definitely, I've distorted the time, and as far as the time. I need to sleep is concerned yeah. and it will kind of increase my appetite level it doesn't make it for people mm. trying to gain weight but it's something I'm chipping in there Quirko, you've had a hard day you need to relax mm. <laughs> so wrap it all up for us so you know I would say that you should know your body type and then you should work with a nutritionist if you are hitting the gym and you don't have a good coach to help you as far as your 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 reason for going there is concerned you have to think about it and probably change it because I've lost four kg I lost five and I've gotten just one I'm still looking for it so you should know your body type if you are a mesomorph if you are an endomorph or an ectomorph mm. and for our discussion gaining weight we spoke about ectomorphs they are recipes to try we have some recipes I don't know if they can quickly put it on screen so that viewers can quickly um, um, look at them for, 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 for them to at least prepare the recipe in the house we have chocolate yeah so we have the chocolate shake you have the chocolate shake this is the body type we, we have the apple we have the pear we have the banana we have the strawberry we have the hourglass but I'm talking about the recipe to try at home we have um, yes we have chocolate banana shake mm -hmm. we have um, super green shake they are um, recipes you can you can try home mm -hmm. yes this is this is that you can try you can quickly snap it and then try it home we have banana in there we have chocolate or whey protein i spoke about we yeah. have peanut butter healthy fats in there so you have goodness sitting in there and this is something you can take an yeah. hour to your workout session or you can work out with it or an hour after your workout okay. session i'll post everything on my pages so okay. you can also and follow and then at least pick your one okay um, some so on your there. page also we would have the super green shake i will put the super green, green shake, shake on my well. page too okay. so if you want you can also so on instagram is at the nutritionist akosia on okay. instagram at the nutritionist akosia mm -hmm. on facebook linkedin twitter nutritionist Akosia, and you can reach me on 0243-350206 for more. Super. Thank you very much, Akosia. Thank you for always having me. All right. It's been, a, it's been a very insightful conversation. Thank you very much, Akosia Kuniriyado. She'll be helping us to understand what it is, to how it is we should go about putting on weight, gaining weight, but in a healthy fashion. Entertainment highlights. Let's take a look at those. We'll be right back. Welcome to Entertainment Highlights on Breakfast Daily. My name is Atu Kwamina. The entertainment music industry in Ghana is about to experience the comeback of Xylophone Music record label after going on the low for some time now. The record label, which formerly signed Shatawale, Becca, Joyce Blessing and Stoneboy, announced the signing of a new artist, Tisha. She adds on to Kumi Guitar and rapper Obibini, who are already on the label. According to the new executive manager of Xylophone Music, Jeffrey Tano, probably known in showbiz as Skinny Willis, said there will be more surprises from their stables in the coming days. In attendance were the CEO of Xylophone Music, Nana Apia Mensa, Eno Baroni, Kumi Guitar, rapper Edem, Ekria Polo, Bulldog, Stoneboy, among others. Ghanaian singer Jane Awindo, probably known as Efia in Ghana music circles, has said that she would love to have a collaboration with an Indian artist. Efia, who recently released The One with Nigerians Siwa Savage, revealed on CTFM's branch in the city with Aja Kwaku Sopon that she is going to embark on a lot of international collaborations because that is the way to get into other music markets. When asked if she would also want to do music with artists from South Africa, the Until the Dawn singer said she would also want to have a feel of the Indian vibe. I want to make music with Indian artists, she said. She also advised Ghanaian artists to do songs with Nigerian artists because they have a vibrant music industry and they have the numbers to push brands and maximize returns.
popular Nigerian author Chimamanda Adichie has said she once had a mild crash on former Ghanaian international and Chelsea outfielder Michael Asian. She made this revelation in the introduction she wrote for a picture book, Africa, The Future of Football, authored by a photographer, Paul Stephenson. Recalling how Nigeria was absent at a football tournament she watched in her introduction titled Football Nationalism, Adichie said she became Ghanaian after the Ghanaian football team caught her attention. Adichie's crash on ASEAN was based on his looks and his playful skills. And that's all for entertainment highlights on Breakfast Daily. My name is Atu Kwamina. understanding on some of the difficult subjects you struggle with in school. As a student, do you feel dissatisfied with how hard it is to figure out a subject you're learning? Or as a parent or guardian, do you worry that your child is struggling to understand some of the subjects in school? Well, now you don't need to sign up for extra lessons or tutors. Simply tune in to Class Act, Mondays to Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. on City TV. Class Act is a show that seeks to enable senior high school students gain a much better understanding of what they learn in school. All you need is a a TV, a chair, your notebook, and your pen. Get clarity on subjects such as maths, English, IT, and science. Class Act airs every Monday to Thursday at 5.30 p.m. on City TV, on DSTV Channel 363, and Go TV Channel 182. Don't forget your pens, pencils, and your notebooks, and tune in to Class Act, only on City TV. There are those with untold stories, unraveled feats, life-changing stories, and lasting legacies. They tell their stories themselves, right here on Footprints. So we go to someone we were put in our various cells, and then, you know, someone you have, a huge, it's a huge prison. And then it was then that it dawned on me that I was really in big trouble. Do you think that, um, the overthrow of Liman was justified? I think that uh, with hindsight, there was no justification. Be inspired by their hard work and resilience that led to those outstanding achievements as we trace their footsteps through the capsule of time. Because of my upbringing, my mother, my father, they are, you know, Christianity, yeah. So because of that, you know, strong I hands strong, at home. Even though I'm the guy smoking, doing all kinds of that, I've never tried. You You've never tried? No, no, never tried weed or anything. You've never, never tried weed? Even drinking, you know, alcohol, no. Why should you people put everything, come and go and go and go Everything was done before Guma arrived in the country. No, I hold the labor here. I hold the labor here. They get a quick wabi. So join me, Samuel Atamensa, and my guests every Saturday at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 4 p.m. Only on City TV. Experts in shipping logistics. Welcome back. It's Breakfast Daily on City TV. And for the cooking segment today, we're going to learn to make egg and avocado wrap. I have with me the best chef in the country, Chef Joseph Dogberto from Danis Chef School. Good morning, Chef. Hello, good morning, madam. How, How are, are you? you? I'm fine. Thank you so much for being with us. Welcome here. Yeah. Now, throughout our you know cooking time, if you have any questions for him, let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550585832. If you're outside Ghana, Please use the country code plus two three three. So, chef, where do we start from? What's an egg and avocado wrap, and what do you need to get it done? Okay, so um, there's basically we need um, the tortilla wrap. Okay. We need avocado. 
Okay. We need lettuce, some soft boiled egg, fresh tomatoes, gherkins. We have um, also um, cream cheese and then salt, pepper, and then. Of course, we have our Danish black yeah. pepper. Should we wash our hands first? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's wash I'll our hands. Start with you. Okay. okay. And we washed our hands over here, but we're doing it again just so if you're home, you remember to always wash your hands before you start cooking. Ready? Yeah. Okay. How have you been? We've not seen you in a while. Yeah, you know, I was hiding because hey. of coronavirus. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we're glad you're, you're out now. Yes. How's it going at the school? Oh, okay, so we just reopened today. Oh, we nice. We just resumed today, yeah. Okay, so if people want to take classes, they can, they can start sure, coming? Sure, yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Oops, okay. And of course, avocados, we can get them, you know, they're, they're, they're really cheap. Eggs yeah. are good for us. What are some more nutritional benefits that we can get from the wrap that we're about to make this morning? Okay, so we have a lot. We have protein, mm -hmm. we have calcium, mm -hmm. we have potassium, we have vitamin um, A. Okay. We also have vitamin B2, we have B6. Okay. And then from the, the tomatoes right. also contain vitamin A as well. You know, right. this is high in protein, okay. the eggs. Okay. Yes, I think that is all. Please help me with that. Thank you. Now our hands. Oh, a little more. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Chef. Okay, so I'll let you start. What do we start with? Okay, so what I'll start with, um, let me just slice mine. Okay. And let me know if you need me to slice anything okay. for you as well. I'm doing now is mm -hmm. I will just into any shape, okay? okay. So I will just cut it this way and I'll okay. just slice them. You know, you can also deceed it before you use it, okay? okay. Yes. Yeah, so. I want this way. Of course, all the nutrients are yeah. in so there as well. So let me just well. slice this one too. What are we slicing now? This is called Gekins. Okay. Can we use pickles if we want? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, yes. Pickles. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, so. All right. And then our avocado. I'll just cut this. So you don't want it too hard and you don't want it too soft as well. Just, yeah. you know, medium. It's perfect. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Okay, so I'll just cut here. Okay. And I'll slice them direct from here. Because I'll be using the spoon okay, to, to just scoop, scoop it, it out. out. Yes. Okay. So you definitely need a lot of avocados for this for this wrap that we're making. Okay, let's put this here so I can use this. Okay. Should I? Yeah. Uh, let me help you there. Swipe the plate. Oh, so big. Yeah. So this is what we have. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, first of all, what I'll do now is you I'll spread my you. cream cheese. Okay. Sorry. This is the cream cheese. Okay. Just a little bit of yes, the cream cheese. Yes, I'll there. spread it on it. Okay. And that's just to give it some flavor. Yeah, so that it can cream actually cream bind together. Okay. Okay. And also give it some more taste. Nice. That already looks gorgeous. I mean, I, I, I'm sure people at home are like, oh, we wish we could be here. Okay, so this I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to just lay this. The thing. lettuce. And people can substitute uh, organic spinach. Yes. If they, if they want spinach, to. lettuce, rockets, okay. leaves, anything. Okay. But I like lettuce because it's crunchy. Yeah. So this is it. 
Is there a reason we're not using onions today? Yes, because you know this, this, this is morning time. and then <laughs> we'll really I'm morning. out with yes. <laughs> But if someone likes it, they can, yeah, you they can, can add onions okay, if you, can you feel like it. Yes. So this is it. Okay. This is what I'm doing here. We have our lettuce, we have our tomatoes, and then we have our... Okay. So now avocados. we have the superstars. Avocados. Oh, yes, I'll add the egg. I'm coming now. Let me just season it first. What are you cutting up? This white pepper. From the instructions. This is our product. No, oh, they nice. don't white it's pepper. Right. Okay. So what I'll do is just sprinkle a little bit on it. Nice. And then back pepper. Yeah. Just a pinch. Just a little. So if you're hoping you want to try this, just grab your avocados, grab your grab your eggs, lettuce, tomatoes. It's actually really affordable. The ingredients we're we're showing you here. I think you can you can get this with about a, a 10 city budget and you have a great healthy breakfast. And we're doing this because we have COVID-19 around and we need to ensure that we have a good immune system. So we have to pay attention to the kinds of things we put in our bodies. And we need to make sure that we are healthy. We are not just consuming carbs on carbs on carbs. So when you look at this, yeah, is it safe to say it. only 20% of the plate is actually carbohydrate, which is like the tortilla and maybe even the cream cheese. Everything else is great vegetables. You have okay, protein, so once so what I'm do we done, do now? I will just wrap it. Okay. Okay. Just wrap it firmly. Okay. Make sure everything goes in there. So once I wrap, mm -hmm. I'll just fold the ends. Okay. Are we gonna stick that tomato in there or just leave it out? No, I'll leave it out. So <laughs> I'll just it made it out. <laughs> ah, that's how they do it. Yes, so yes. Okay. Okay. And we're done. This is it. Then what we'll do. Now this. presentation is key. This plate. Yes, that is what I'm going to serve on. So just a few slices. All the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David! <laughs> so David can join yes, us and, 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 join and enjoy the meal. Yeah, sure. So you don't want to taste your handiwork? <laughs> oh, don't worry. I still have a CC I can taste. <laughs> so let me just wipe mine. Okay. Glass. <laughs> Oh, you brought us, you brought us yes. drinks as well. Wow. Any soft beverage of your choice, you can, you know, you can use, use it. it. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll shake the drink while you, you know. Wow, we're really, <laughs> you know, getting to the middle of the year the right way. I mean, every time Danish Chef School is here, we, we're like, we're going to eat. Beyond just, you know, the, the, the fact that we're bringing you guys great information at home, <laughs> we get to eat good food. Okay, so walk us through the ingredients we used again sir okay so ingredients we used was mm -hmm. the tortilla wrap okay the gherkins okay. the avocado mm -hmm. some eggs fresh tomatoes and lectures okay then our um white pepper that is day dom and then okay. black pepper wow yeah. and a okay. pinch of salt nice david join us please Here's your plate and your drink. Mm. Thank you so much, Chef. I think it's Joseph. time to take off the mask. Please. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I can properly enjoy this. It's that good. It is amazing. Yeah. And mm. I love it. Wow. Talk to us about classes. 
kind of classes begin and how do we get on board to want to do these things with you? Like how again come again? Classes, classes yeah, are being classes. successful. Yes. Okay, so we just, you know, resume mm -hmm. and then the school is open. Anyone who is interested to join the NHF school can do so. We are on the Spring Tech Road. Okay. Okay, there's Basket Junction. Okay. That's where we are located. We are also on Instagram, Facebook, the NHF school. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sir. What, is, what do you think? This is incredible. I mean, in such a short time, how many minutes have you been doing this? Like what, <laughs> five, Ten seven minutes? minutes yeah. And you pull up, pull off this amazing dish. Yeah. I love it. Enjoying it, yeah. So there you have it. Cream cheese is very important because you have to put it on the tortilla. Then you put your avocado, which is the superstar of the wrap. You have your eggs for all the protein. Of course, we did with the cream cheese already. Yeah. Then we'll go to the vegetables. You have your salt in there, your black pepper, your olives. And those are the simple ingredients you need to get your egg and avocado wrap. Yeah. Chef, thank you so much. How important is it for us to pay attention to the kinds of things we put in our bodies right now? Because a lot of people think it's expensive. No, this to is eat not expensive well. at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you can see these are basic ingredients that you know they sell on the market. Yeah. You know, as you said, ten cities, twenty cities, you can actually do this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, madam. Don't go anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my egg and avocado wrap. I will be talking to episode right after this message. Too much to say, too much to talk, too much to lose, so we got too much God, too much injustice, yet we have too much loss, too much hatred make my people them can't show love, too much killings, too much gunshots, too much graveyard, it means too much life lost, too much life wasted by this damn virus, too much and many more, but still no cure, I've seen too much, hey. Blind to the system, but I face too much. Skin looks worry, but my age too young. 24 hours, but every day feels long. Because I've seen too much, paid too much. Blind to the system, but I face too much. Skin looks worry, but my age too young. 31 days, but every month feels long. In this world, let's make it a better place for you. Of the rubbish and chemicals, yeah, we pull it in the sea. Good Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Too much of this, too much of that, too much of I'm black and he's white. Well, it no matter skin color, cause it's one blood. Better no love is the answer. We still I wonder why. Smile on the face, but pure hatred we deem. It's in every fruit we are, but we ain't planting no seed. Clubs said there is no shit, but we keep cutting the trees. Before you love for the loser, make sure say so you will see. Hey, too much. Hey, too much. Blind to the system, but I face too much. All right, so that was ep uh, too much by episode. I'm gonna talk to episode right now. Episode, good morning. How are you doing? Good, 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 Fantastic. That's a beautiful song. Thank you. I, I, I love the creative direction. There's, there's a lot going on in there. Definitely. Uh, but more importantly, I want us to talk about the, the theme, the yeah. theme behind too much. What uh, were you thinking about? Yeah, as a musician, I say sometimes that um, sometimes we need to. with our, our lyrics, with our melodies and all of that because we're the voice for the voiceless. So um, being in these serious times, I think it's fair to, you know, enlighten people about what is going on in the other part of the world where yeah. our fellow black brothers and all of that are mm, going to... Black Lives Matter. Right, you get what I mean? Okay. And basically also to touch on issues that I feel is relevant here. Like in the song, I spoke about how um, we dump refuse everywhere. Yeah. I spoke about 
Corona, COVID-19, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's it's just me. That's what I love to do. Mm. Just go we'll off talk my about current relevant issues exactly. and Definitely. all that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what pro- what other project are you working on this year? So apart from this, I I did another project which is more of like an all star song. Okay. Um, it has the heal the world kind of thing. Ah. You know. Um, okay. I I should have said it. But <laughs> <I've> said it. <laughs> yeah. So I think that should go. That's coming after this okay, um, project. Lovely. This one just dropped yesterday. Okay. Um, expect that that project. It, mm. it features some of our great artists. Ochami Kwame is on there. Super. Trig is on there. Um, oh wow. Um, we have Bright's book back. Mm-hmm. We have M O G. Okay. The gospel artist Nilante. Oh wow. Um, Beat God, Creamy, and Interesting. Drew, the young arts. We have Sinaso. Okay. So it's just a it's just a three minute song, mm. but I had to. Make sure I get all these arts to at least voice yeah. one or two lines yeah. for, from the record. Super. When can we expect that roughly? Um, I don't know. For now, I'm just trying to push this too one much. First. Okay. Yes. Um, people should just have a good feel because I know mm. that the, they, they actually love the video. Yes. Yeah. It's like I've got crazy remarks about it. Big up Stoneboy and the likes of Adam who um, tweeted about it yesterday. I really, I really appreciate it. This mm. Yeah. All right. Well. What what can people where can people download this? Where can they stream it? Where can they basically it's on music? all the digital platforms? Spotify, iTunes is on um, Audio Mark, SoundCloud, mm. and then the video is on YouTube. Too okay. much um, on my social media handles too. You can get all the information. What are your links. social media handles? Episode music. Episode but you know my ex- episode is with an X. Okay. So it's E P I X O D E M U S I C. Episode music. Yes. Super. Well, let's take a look at too much again. Too much to talk, too much to lose, so we got too much God, too much injustice, yet we have too much loss, too much hatred make my people, them can't show love, too much killings, too much gunshots, too much graveyard, it means too much life lost, too much life wasted by this damn virus, too much and many more, but still no cure, I've seen too much, hey, too much, blind to the system, but I face too much, skin looks worried, but my age too young, 24 hours. But every day feels long Because I've seen too much Too much Blind to the system But I face too much Skin looks worried But my age is too young 31 days But every month feels long In this world Let's make it a better place For you I was just talking to my best friend in the U.S. about, you know, a lot of people in the U.S. feeling like they want to just come back. Yeah. Just to be in a place where you are not a minority, Mm -hmm. you're just black and you can live freely. And I think we take a lot of these things for For granted. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's been a good day. It's been a good show. Uh, Thank you for staying with us. Uh, We're going to wrap up here and and leave you with episode and you're going to enjoy more of episode. But don't forget that if you missed any of the segments of the show, CityTube is the place to go. And that's where you get all the different segments of the art. Everything on City TV will be right there on City Tube. Definitely, and as well, we're still in our City Business Festival. We started our reboot the first week. Last week, we talked about e-commerce, and this week, we'll be looking at agriculture. Now, if you want to join the conversation, you have to register at 0205. 973-973. 973-973. The number again is 0205-973-973. And if you're experiencing any hardship in your environment, in your community, and you want to get the attention of policy makers, then take your phones out and record a one-minute video up to a 250-word message to the president. Let him see exactly what's happening in your area and how that is hindering your growth. The email to send is hello, Mr. President, TV at gmail.com. And you can also send it to us on WhatsApp at 0550-585832. The email again is hello, Mr. President, TV at gmail.com. And the number is 0550-585832. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this Monday for Breakfast Daily. My name is Jifa Ekia. I'm and I'm David Kwekusechi. We'll see you at 7.30 tomorrow, but now we leave you in the yeah. hands of episode. Yeah, man, no man. Yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Big Up, everybody watching right now, the very good part was in the beginning. 
Packer on the strings, freestyle one. Also, we tell them now, big gun booby old track. I know fat Joe, so we now go live back. Tell us that them now go see we did. No, them now go see we did. Break life, and if you love ten back, help the wife him try for me. Like, I'll tell them, send them now go see we did. No, them now go see we did. We tell them, we change color, see we change color, change color to the end of the day. We change color, and we change shape to way. Why we don't like where breakfast daily change color, see we change color, change color to the end of me. Hey, we change color, different color, but I cost it. Alright, we tell them, three days ago, me have it too only for them to say, she should be rocking an episode of it, my bad, but not to give up a safe for film issue. Why if you know what them can't take with you, fool, no? 26 feet down and a big big stone from you this where you go, then your history goes. Be a punchline, make the blood clot can speak now. City TV, from each other right road. Them say you sell low, sell low. Them want to see you dead life, then look and look. Them try every means and every method, method. So we tell a boy now, them say them bad. Them bad, them bad. Them bad, them bad. I'm from Mr. Bota Road, and we mother that marks. Can I lose it with the rude marks? Them say them bad. Them bad, them bad. And them bad, them bad. I'm from Mr. Bota Road. Watch the man. Why we tell them no? Them say pray fast daily. I make them no say every so call on me and me. And everywhere we day we come from, them scare me. Them no say but why them them can't free me. Anyone we step in a CTTV, so we do it clean this. Make them no say we in a COVID-19 season, but we still a room clean. Anyone we step for your have mash a whole scene. The very good bad boy name is episode. Freestyle this, I saw the thing go. Pack up on the street, so we run them real low. Anyone we come your way. Tell the boy them you the chorus We change color, see we change color Change color to the end of it Avatar, we change color Now we change shape to waiting Can we start this? What we say be Breakfast daily Make them the same episode, none of them can pay me So we go are rich Rich man of African, I make them the same episode That's scary, so we say E, every day tune in to City TV Freestyle episode Around it over again, yeah All of them know us, they won't pick up the microphone and freestyle, so we kill them once again. That's so key. Kill them with the squad, kill them with the lyrics, kill them with the vibe. And so we go F freestyle this. Make them do say episode of freestyle from the air. So we go again. Hey, Almighty Jah, ja, I feel blessed. We in this COVID 19 season. So we go S. See it clear. Freestyle this episode come in there. So we go T. Tell up your friend and your friend say episode in a city TV again daily. Breakfast daily, your fuck a freestyle man. As we tell them now, change color, see we change color, change color to the end of it. Avatar, we change color, different color. Big up every dance on artist, you see me? My name is Episode, representing the very good bad boy. Too much video is out there. Go check that one here, no man. We go on. Mix me from each other right road. Them say you sell low, sell low. Them want to see you take life and open up. Try every means and every method. Steppings. All right. Cha. Check them no say episode. I kill it up again and then the world we step in a breakfast life with coffee. Kill them no. One drop from me we show them how the thing go. Back up, play up the rhythm once now. And the episode I represent to the man. <laughs> yeah. Life we live in color. Still have it one. All right. Let me talk to the people then. I will say now new level, new level. Yeah. Them sit and I sip juice when me day for me grind and hustle. Cha! Funny on the brag about the clear picture when them never help fix my puzzle. Yo, where were they? Where my food never cooked? Now they want sit on my table. They must have had a new level, new level. Listen, hey, new level, new devil. New success comes with new devil. So my mama always tell me to be careful. Keep praying and never watch no evil. Yeah, a new level, new devil. Turn a Achievements comes with ten devils. Careful of the idea and be under spectacle. Could have been your own part. Miss me. Paka as we go again. Um. Lava feed him. Fire feed him. Wolf in a sheep skin. Will live on him a pretend. Talk you was a loser when you try to prevail. So me like a every friend and break family. Day. Hey, hey. Death to them. Blind to them. 
sack them but I they came on red card to them I win a power with them now laugh with them Steppings, watch my leg no man You were the club with no backing willing and no forcing promises and pledges The people start clapping Few months running and when people start asking Kept on the low by the truth I'm attacking In them you said it I'm done with the lying One after one and the worship keep coming Have you been paid? I said no Them can't overstand what we said Then all of them talking and talking The bloggers keep blogging Controversy setting and people start asking Your reference keep praying Some of them snitching Wasting them credit My Facebook them stacking Them talking, them talking I'm laughing, I'm laughing Jump, jump, we rocking Then and the episode I represent right now So the thing there's a man Very good man going to be there with Parker Mart COVID-19 lockdowns are impacting religions and traditions in many ways, including cancellation of worship services, pilgrimages, traditional celebrations, as well as cultural ceremonies. Although many churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are offering worship through online streamings and other unique ways to worship together, many are still feeling the impact of this pandemic, which continues to disrupt normal worship. Behind me is the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception that used to hold four masses on any given Sunday, gathering more than 3,000 worshipers in each sermon and about 10,000 on a special occasion, has had to close its doors due to COVID-19. On this episode of Our Voices, we take a look at how lockdowns are impacting religious communities and how clergy are using technology to keep the congregations connected and how it is safe or not to go back to corporate worship as governments around the world are beginning to ease restrictions on religious gatherings. Hello and welcome to The Conversation. I am Orian Itangishaka. I'm joined by my co-host Ian Bior and Heidi Adams Fitzpatrick. Countries and territories around the world are enforcing lockdowns on various degrees due to COVID-19 pandemic amongst groups that are harshly affected by these measures are religious communities. Today I'm identifying houses of worship, churches, synagogue, and mosques as essential places that provide essential services. Some governors have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential, but have left out churches and other houses of worship. It's not right. So I'm correcting this injustice and calling Houses of Worship Essential. Many millions of Americans embrace worship as an essential part of life. The ministers, pastors, rabbis, imams, and other faith leaders will make sure that their congregations are safe as they gather and pray. Now we have the privilege of talking with Reverend Okure, who is the director of the African Faith Justice Network here in Washington, who's going to help us to understand the impact of these lockdowns on worship. Now, Reverend, we are sitting here at the Basilica that usually holds hundreds of thousands of people moving in and out. Uh, it's pretty empty since COVID-19. Some may call this pandemic a taste of faith and not just for the Christian community, but for other religions as well. What do you say? Uh, that's correct. It's a test of faith because whether going to church on Sunday, synagogue on Saturday, or mosque on Friday, that is being prevented. However, it has forced people to go into a deeper meaning to ask themselves questions, what does my faith mean to me? And some of them we found that they are already beginning to reflect uh, internally, knowing that God lives in me. Mm -hmm. And so we find people actually reaching out, being generous mm -hmm. more than they normally would be, mm -hmm. 
I'm paying particular attention to the needs of others. Mm. It is meaningful to them, not just being mechanical. Mm. So there is a, a positive side to it. Mm. I know that, however, uh, the longing to be together it's still is there. still there. Mm. Yeah. And Reverend, what have you seen to be the biggest impact on the religious community from this COVID-19? The, the Catholic institution, as you were talking about mass earlier, mm -hmm. you know, and so this thing away, but thanks to modern electronics, mm -hmm. like every other religious community, uh, there have been online masses. Some priests have gone as far as collecting the photos, family photos of their members, and pinning them on the pews. Mm. And so when the celebrating mass alone is looking at, technically speaking, the community, but they're in photos. So that's one impact. I know that uh, some churches who were struggling, and so some church staff have seen their salary cut because of the lack of income. And you know that the, the church members, many of them have lost their jobs too. So it impacts the ability to contribute to supporting the institutional framework of the church. Uh, some may ask, is the corporate gathering, the corporate worship essential for the spiritual life of a worshiper? It is essential. Spiritual life is anchored on the community, mm -hmm. you know, even though it's a personal journey, mm -hmm. but it's not a journey in isolation, you know, because how do I relate with you? Mm -hmm. How do I see the image of God in you? Mm -hmm. How do I interact with the community? How do I live out my faith? Mm -hmm. God put us here together mm -hmm. to, to help one another grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Now, we're beginning to see governments around the world easing restrictions on religious gatherings. I mean, we've heard President Donald Trump asking governors to open up the space for people to go back into worship. Are we ready? And if we do go back into worship as usual, what would worship look like? I think on the one hand, there is apprehension uh, on people coming together so suddenly. Uh, but on the other, people are anxious to get back. So some churches, in fact, in other countries, they have begun to let people in rather than ga gather 3,000, they say 300. And so you sign in, after 300, they close the door uh, uh, so that people can have their space. And then, so some churches have uh, multiplied the number of services to accommodate as many as possible. We need to adjust uh, to, to accommodate people who so desire to be there. Now on a side note, Reverend, we've seen a lot of tensions here in the U.S. concerning the death of George Floyd. We've also seen President Donald Trump come out for the first time recently uh, after these uh, protests have begun uh, and, sh and was at a religious institution holding a Bible. What do you make of that? I wish he didn't do that because some people did that, saw that as a, a political stunt. And you don't do that when people are hurting. You don't do that when tensions run high. I've seen a barrage of, of former military wigs come to condemn it, that action, including some, a number of religious leaders that that was just uncalled for. Um, rather than address the nation and try to unite it, so I think it was very insensitive. Pope Francis just said, look, uh, racism is a sin and it's not pro-life to be racist. Uh, having said that, it is not just the police. Racism here is institutionalized in a political system, in a housing, in a medical system, in the legal system. So it, it, it permeates all aspects of our social, political, and even religious life. We should not try to pin this all on the police. Yes, police brutality triggered it, but it, the racism is not just within the police. Collectively, we have to own the blame. We have to repent for institutional racism, and especially racism against blacks in this country that goes on 400 years. Laws are made to keep people subjugated, uh, disparity in sentencing,